when His Excellency came up on board about five years ago, one of the things that confronted us in education was the decline in the reading culture. We don't blame the children. Because when we were all, all growing up, we didn't have mobile phones. We didn't know what was mobile phones. When we were all growing up, I remember when my father, father bought a black and white television. We celebrated the thing. My father was the principal. And we never had a television until 19, 1980 when he bought a black and white television. When they tell him, then later, now daddy has bought a television. It was celebrated. Now, no matter, they have all of this everywhere. Farm with you. It's either like they are Facebooking, Facebooking that doesn't allow them to face their books, or they are tweeting, or they are doing this, or they are doing that. So we don't blame them. It is the society in which they are growing up. No matter, and I want to find digital natives. Digital natives, those who have been who are born into the digital age. I want to do two migrants. I want to do migrants. People who I know that I meet never, you know, we have no clue. We have no clue what they are talking about. You see, these are challenges which we know that our children have. Real challenges, not their own fault. But we need to bring them back somehow to begin to think about who they really are. And we say there is nothing like a book. His Excellency Chief Dr. William Bian has a clear mandate about what he wants us to do in education. He says that no child is to be left behind. He has a clear blueprint on what he wants us to do in education, very clearly defined. No child is to be left behind. We must ensure that the learning needs of all are met through equitable distribution of resources and learning of lifelong skills and ensure that we are one of the three top states with the lowest illiteracy rate. That is our strategic objective. How are we going to do that was a big challenge for us when we came in five years ago. And then we started, just like His Excellency Lewis, he's a very thorough person. He's not somebody that will do something because he wants to do something. He has to find a reason and a justification for whatever he's doing. We set up a committee, a very strongly, you know, a very strong committee, made up uh, researchers, uh, led by Professor Mazigo, who went in and we did a thorough research and we found out why our reading culture was declining. One of the things we actually found out, at the area that we actually mostly affected, actually, based on what we did, we are mostly the river right areas. About six local government areas, Anambra East, Anambra West, Ayamelam, Obaru, Oka North, Oyi, well, Oyi is not so, so big. But the other ones, we are very, very outstanding in terms of, you know, paucity of teachers, in terms of uh, lack of uh, reading, in terms of dropouts, and so on and so forth. We actually found out that most of our girls at primary six and at GS3, that they get pregnant and drop out of school. We have tried to discuss that in our education uh, meetings and stakeholders meetings. How are we going to meet that challenge? Sometimes they stay for a long period of time during break, during uh, um, holidays and they get into trouble, most of them drop out. And there's, and there's uh, also there is that gendered culture within those communities, which actually does not um, encourage, if you like, education in that sense. And we have a strategy about how we are going to bring our girls back to school, how we are going to bring back our children back to school, how we have to make them focused on what they are going to learn, and so on and so forth. We studied a lot of things. Number one, we did what we call role modeling. Your Excellency record in 2016, you most graciously sponsored that we we celebrate Chuke Mekike when he did his 50 years as, a, as an author. It was an opportunity to showcase our children, showcase what they were able to do. We were able to portray that our children have huge potentials. Our children were able to, to show actually that they can do it. We started some slogans in the school and we said, nothing is impossible. To quote you, Your Excellency, and we said that, yes, we can. Nothing is impossible, and yes, we can. This is a slogan we keep on, you know, in our schools. To show our children that, yes, they can do it. But they need our support. They need our support to be able to do that. Your Excellency, since 2015, the Reading Association of Nigeria has been with us in this state. And what we do is what we call Literacy Enhancement Achievement Project. 
And to sustain that, one of the things we did was to do the literacy festival, the first one, and the second one, which we used uh, the book Her Excellency wrote about we need an intimate biography to show you, you were there, Your Excellency, with your wife, and we were able to see what our children can do. And we said, we are not going to leave them just like that. We are going to support them more. That's why we are setting up, Your Excellency, what we call the community reading hubs. The community reading hub that you are going to inaugurate. And I want to thank the education secretaries for what they have done. We had a meeting, the education stakeholders meeting on Tuesday. And by today, they have the reading ambassadors. I asked them to get the reading ambassadors and the reading champions. These people who are going to be the backbone for us to come together, if you like, once a week, once in two weeks, and do our children will read with us after they have come to school. They need support. And that is why we're here today, to inaugurate them and to set up the community reading hubs and inaugurate them. But I, I was really surprised that you were able to come. I know how busy this time is for you. And I really want to thank you for coming today. And uh, what we keep on promising all the time is that we must continue to widen the horizon of education, expand the frontiers of education, and we must make sure that, like you wish, Your Excellency, no child will be left behind. Thank you very much. My name is Mark Atap Dorat from Mountain Primary School. The title of my reading is The Refugee Boy. The strange cry, non indigenous must go rent the air. Little did I know what that meant. That cry all the same haunted me in my sleep. My dreams were horrible. Why was mom so troubled? Why was dad so suddenly pale and sickly? All my five brothers and sisters were born here. We were all born here. We have been schooling here all our lives. All our friends are in this great town. Since we are born, we have never been anywhere. Yes, we are not non indigents. We are safe. After the family altar, unusual camp prevailed. There was no rush to take us, to get us ready for school. Before I could say a word to that, that dreaded cry, that cry that had haunted me in my sleep, alas, in my dream, rent the air again. This time with great vehemence and ferocity, a heart came running to our apartment. Dad and mom quickly huddled us to the cow shed and hid us in a hole. Where dad and mom stored food, feed stuff and drugs for our livestock. In this horrible hole, which had become our sanctuary, we were told to keep quiet. We did. No one spoke. There was fear in dad's eye. Mom stood. Dad sweated. Mom panted for us as if all she had and hoped for were to be snatched from her soonest. This is what I wonder. What does this mean? I mutter to myself. Thank you. My name is Wan Eri Eberechu from Santa Maria Primary School. I'm here to read out new words from what she read now. They are indigenous, I-N-D, I-G-E, and E-S, indigenous. Number two, trouble, T-R-O-U-B-L-E-D, trouble. Number three, unusual, U-N-U-S-U-A-L, unusual. Number four, prevail, P-R-E-V-A-I-L-E-D, prevail. Number four, vehemence, V-E-H-E-F-E-N-S-E-E, -E -E -E. vehemence. Number, number five, hold, H-O-R-D-E, hold. Number six, apartment, A-P-A-R-T-M-E-N-T, -E apartment. Number seven, horrible. H O R R I B L E, horrible. Number seven, sanctuary. S A N C C U A R Y, sanctuary. Number eight, dead. D A Z E D, dead. Number nine, water. M U T T E R E D, water. Num number ten, ferocity. F E R O C I T Y, ferocity. Thanks. We also have what we call Education Management Information System, EMIS. Um, at the low government level, we have uh, the EMIS officers who are in charge of collecting data. Data is very important, you know, when we want to plan education. And that's one of the things we are, we are trying to strengthen in our ministry, to ensure that data collection, you know, uh, becomes something that people can uh, you know, each time, you know, sometimes you ask me, how many students do you have? How many do you have? I mean, 
I may not know all that unless we are able to kill them. So, Your Excellency, you must graciously approve that we are, we are giving to all our uh, education secretary, uh, to the ABIS officers. I want all the education secretary to please come out and receive their laptops. Anambra East, Anambra West, Alpha South, Aya Andalou, Yudu Kofia, Andalou, Um, I'm very, very happy to be here this afternoon uh, for a few reasons. First is that I'm very, very proud of our teachers. I'm very proud of the teachers and that is why I've extended their, uh, their retirement uh, age from 60 to 65. And let me explain, let me explain. At 60, except you want to go to classroom, you, are, uh, you, are, uh, you, you will not benefit from this. So even if you are being fellow at this point, you must go to the classroom. That's the only condition. You must go to the classroom. So you cannot continue to be admin or whatever that is not academic after age of 60. Uh, I hope I made myself very clear here. Again, I am uh, very proud of our students. They've been making us proud all over. You know. I am particularly proud of uh, the Honorable Commissioner for Basic Education for her tireless effort in uh, getting most of our programs in education off the table. I am very proud, particularly, about the way our students, uh, our pupils, all over. Every time I go to very remote areas and visit the school, I'm always interested in our 10 shared values, you know, and uh, you, what surprises me uh, is that uh, all of them, or most of them, do recite all of them, conveniently. I want to encourage the teachers to continue to make this uh, in, in those days in the morning before you go to the class uh, that you do an assembly, there's an assembly, you know, at that assembly, these shared values must be recited so that it can uh, stick in the memory of these uh, young lads. And in future, it will guide them, it will guide them in their development. You know, because each of those 10 shared values is a very powerful motivator for an individual, each of those uh, uh, shared values. So I'm very proud of the students, I'm proud of the teachers, and, and I'm proud of uh, the people, support staff in the academic uh, uh, area. Uh, we, we, we've been trying to improve things and make sure that no, no child is left behind in education. And that is why uh, we've done most of the things uh, that we are doing. Uh, we, the, the, the prof mentioned to you uh, a researched uh, document that uh, showed us first why our female children do not go to school. So we are working to plug all the loopholes, particularly in the hard to reach areas. You know, we're trying to do migrant schools, you know, improve on the uh, teaching facility in that area, encourage the parents uh, to avoid any marriages and allow the students to, or people to go to school properly. You know, so it's important. Back to why we're here, uh, reading is uh, very critical. My father was a headmaster and uh, my father will make sure that as you read, you have a, a book which we call glossary by your side. Uh, so anytime you find a new word that you don't know, you do what? You write it 
and, his, and the explanation for the dictionary. Anytime you are reading and uh, you don't understand the word, you look it up and put the word and the meaning by the side. Uh, my father will insist that every Friday you go through those uh, glossary of uh, new uh, words that you've learned. And uh, I, I, I recall that uh, by the time by the time I went to secondary school, I had over 20 books that are glossary, which I take time to revise. Uh, I took time them to revise uh, every time. So it will help your vocabulary. It will help your uh, the power of speech that uh, you have in delivery. And uh, naturally, those words will drop as you uh, and, and and people will be impressed as to your. Uh, facility in the use of English language, you know, and uh, because of uh, the challenges of modern age, uh, most of our young lads are no longer reading, if you will. And when, what they do is that they go via text messages where they don't speak full English in that, you know, so continuously that is hampering the students from uh, uh, from doing very well where they should. So we believe that reading culture, irrespective of the modern age we're in, that it's important that uh, we encourage our people and the teachers. Because uh, reading is not only for the students. Uh, once you're a teacher, you're also a student because you're continuously reading. Uh, in my father's days, they used to do notes of lesson. I don't know whether you guys do it now. Uh, notes of lessons. He will spend time to write it in beautiful cursive for in preparation for the next day's uh, 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 lecture, if you will, or, or teaching. You know. So please continue. You're doing well. I'm encouraging yourselves to do well. Uh, I, I, I make sure I pay your salaries as I win you, your pension. You know, and your leave allowance, you know, so that you won't have any reason not to be happy going to school. Because uh, an unhappy teacher will not impact good knowledge to the to the uh, to the people or students, as the case may be. You know, you have to be happy to to be able to, to deliver. Similarly, uh, a, a, a student with all kinds of challenges from home uh, coming to school will also not absorb or pay attention. Uh, you know, to what is being taught. You know, so we're doing everything to make your reading environment conducive, your schools. We started with uh, fencing them around, you know, uh, trying to move out people that are uh, gradually, uh, up, you know, infiltrated into your property, the school property and building. We've had many cases like that everywhere, you know, because of lack of fencing, some funny people will come in and build there. So we're going to knock down all those buildings in school uh, property. You know, uh, physical uh, phys exercise is also very critical for the students. Many uh, in our time, there used to be a day set aside for, for PE. And you wear the, 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 the pants written PT there, physical training. You know, and I don't know whether you guys do it now. Do you? So it's important that the young ones inculcate very early the habit of exercise, reading. These are the things that will help you uh, to be a better uh, student in future. Uh, now you're already making us proud. Every time we, we come first in everything, uh, that has the people representing us in school debate for co four years consistently, Anambra has been first in school uh, presidential school debate, and that fit uh, uh, is not a mean fit, and I commend the teachers for doing that. This things we are doing today will encourage that culture of reading, and we'll have many, many more, uh, if you will, people that will debate for us uh, in their various uh, areas. The books you have here cover maths, biology, geography, medicine, name it, nursing, everything. 
you know, and they've been vetted, very important. We don't give you books that uh, the prof and, and the team have not read. All these books have been vetted, and we found out that it's a good book that will go into our school system. That's how we do things. We don't just give you a book for giving you books sake, you know. So uh, teachers must ensure that uh, these books are properly utilized. They should ensure that uh, 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 their students take advantage of, uh, of, of this book because they will benefit immensely from that. The other thing I've told the prof uh, this afternoon, we started it before. I heard that uh, there was initial resistance, but I don't believe in resistance. I've instructed that every teacher must own a laptop and must be computer literate. That's a condition going forward for you to retain your job. We are going to train you free of charge. We are going to train you free of charge. So don't be reticent on, uh, on uh, new, uh, new culture coming up because uh, you can't be analog when the students you're teaching are already, uh, are already uh, digital. You know, this is a digital age and therefore our teachers must be digital. If you, look, if you look at your classrooms, we have whiteboards now. I don't know whether we have achieved that in 100% of the school skate, uh, but we, we, we have whiteboards. Uh, these are modern environment, uh, you know? We, we are renovating all schools. Uh, 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 Asubeb is doing very well in that area. And there are so many more that uh, this new board inherited that they are going to oversight and make sure that those things are done properly. You know, so this note, it is my pleasure to unveil the uh, plaque. I am unveiling two plaques. And the first one is, uh, let me read what is on the plaque. Anambra State Minister of Basic Education in collaboration with Green Peak on Africa 2019 Governors uh, Schools Debate Championship. Governors Schools Debate Championship. The, the theme is sustaining the culture of dialogue in Anambra State. Sustaining the culture of dialogue in Anambra State. Thank you, uh, Prof. and the team. The, the, the second plan, I want to read what is in this plan. Uh, Anambra State Government Minister of Basic Education expanded the frontiers of education. Establishment of community reading hubs, inauguration of reading ambassadors and reading champions. It takes a community to train a child. No child is to be left behind. Uh, adoring this marker, oh, sorry, this plan is uh, Professor Medua and my humble self. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, so His Excellency will now make a symbolic presentation of books. It is important uh, for everybody to note that uh, we are not discriminating here. Uh, this book is being given to public and private schools and public, private, mission schools. Uh, whether they are Catholics, Anglican, Pentecostal, Sabbath, whatever it is, it is free, we are giving them free to all the students. You know, it's very important to make that point. Uh, uh, the public and private, sorry, the private and mission schools are also getting them. You know, and uh, every year we are going to improve their library uh, by ensuring that more modern books come into that. Uh, and by the time our teachers are up to speed with respect to uh, uh, computer usage, we are going to load all the things you require in that your uh, computer, and you don't need to be carrying physical books around. You know, we also encourage the students to bring their laptops to school, particularly students in uh, uh, SS Senior secondary school, you know, uh, that, that will be a long way in preparing them on being better students at the university or other tertiary institutions. We also give these books to 
tertiary institutions. That's why uh, I think the university has already collected the ass. College of Education will be picking up the ass. Uh, Polytechnic will also be picking up the ass. You know, the nursing schools around uh, will be picking up the ass. You know, and uh, the medical students, what have you? Everybody is taking this book. Every year, we will bring you quality books. This book has been thoroughly read and vetted, and we believe that it will improve the knowledge uh, 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 profile of our students and Anambra students in general. We want Anambra students to continue to shine, to be proud, to walk tall. You know, these are, these are things you learn from school. You don't, they don't teach you that in the in the university, because you, you, university is a very narrow area. You go to study what you want to study. But in this school, at this school level, you touch on many things that will take you through life, like how to hold cutlery. You know, these are things that are taught in schools. I believe you. Uh, you find a way to do so, even if even if uh, you are not in a boarding school. There must be a day set aside to teach. Uh, culture and uh, etiquette, you know, is very important. Yeah.